So, according to, I think, the Huffington Post, beer is so estrogenic that hops are used to treat hot flashes in menopausal women. Pretty sure that's a junky way to think about uh, science and diet. But I've also had uh, my favorite health advisor from Rogue Health and Fitness tell me something similar to avoid beers. But I believe that beer in moderation is actually healthy because I've read articles about the uh, benefits of hops as an anxiety reliever, which anxiety will cause, you know, testosterone to uh, drop. And I believe uh, beer also has digestive benefits and it's good for your skin in some way through some chemical process. Um, what might happen to me, though, is I might die later tonight because I did way too much physical stuff today. I mean, our uh, workload at UPS is, is mad. It's crazy because during this COVID outbreak, everybody is ordering stuff and especially hospitals and places and my trucks go to hospitals. Um, so there's a comment thread on uh, a video by a fellow that talks a lot about UPS and in it, somebody's wife mentioned under one of my comments that her husband yesterday just received word that they'd be getting uh, paid emergency leave. So at first I was like, wait, are the drivers gonna be you know out of work? But no, what paid emergency leave means is that they're gonna be, you know, let off work if they have a sick family member or if they themselves become sick from COVID-19. But um, yeah, I went out on a bike ride around town, which is like I don't know, maybe two or three mile bike ride in the sun. And then I, I lifted weights, which was stupid, but uh, I need to stop pushing myself so much. <clears throat> now I'm getting kind of this panic attack. Oh shit, just cause, like my beer is having a panic attack right now. But really, I just need to calm down and uh, and rest and not worry about a fucking heart attack or something stupid like that. Making this video is therapy, and it's also something I need to do. I apologize to anybody who's uncomfortable with, uh, like, shirtlessness and stuff, but I'm Eastern European, and <laughs> it's pretty normal to me. So, anybody that's put off by it, hey, um, just listen to the audio or go do something else. I don't mean to uh, offend anybody's sensibilities because apparently, I mean, even my friends, we went hiking and uh, I wanted to bask in the sunlight a little bit because there was a little bit of sunshine. So I took off my shirt and then they gave me shit for it. I'm like, okay, Americans are a little strange. It's a little, it's a little bit strange. Uh, I may have gotten too much sun, to be honest, but I'm trying to absorb as much vitamin D and sunny goodness as possible without, you know, damaging my, my skin. I have a fairly, like, you know, Russian complexion, so it's kind of, kind of an iffy situation, but it's just so damn pleasant to chill in the sun with a coffee in the morning or a beer in the, in the afternoon, ride the bike around town. I actually saw lots of people walking and running and doing stuff, which is actually good because, as I said in my last video, you don't want to be, you know, out there, not out there, but in there, in a small building or, you know, a normal sized building where stuff is ventilating with a bunch of people, like an apartment complex, I think would be especially bad. So it's kind of weird that they're quarantining everybody, but this thing might actually be spread more aggressively. Again, not an expert, just kind of um, ad living here. So I'm subscribed recently to, you might have seen the ads on YouTube, the Epoch Times, which is kind of a, um, you know, conservative publication. You could describe it as that way, although I don't, it's not like a neocon thing. It's very, I don't know, I like their approach, even though it's a little, a little kind of, I mean, there's nothing wrong with family friendly, but there's a certain cringe element to certain family friendly stuff for me. So, but I want to read about what they said um, about how the coronavirus is overhyped. And I, again, I'm somewhat in agreement with that. Um, my, my friend keeps on sending me these Facebook links about how our, our healthcare system is bad. And Italy, who has like the second best healthcare system in the world, couldn't handle it very well. Well, I mean, again, Italy has a very aging population. 
and yes, of course, we should be concerned about the inadequacies of our of our system. But this level of panic, you know, is not. I don't know. So also, this is going to just be all over the place. Sorry, but my driver today for one of my trucks, he said that he's been hearing that there's people in his age group that are taking up rooms at the ICU. I don't know if that's because of coronavirus or, or whatever's going on. Maybe the stressors surrounding the situation have made people have more like heart attacks or or, or coronaries or things. But yeah, it is. Uh, there is an element of, of concern, perhaps that's legitimate. But again, let's look at what uh, experts say about why we shouldn't be too worried about the coronavirus. The number of confirmed cases doesn't tell the whole story, as mild cases and untested and recovered patients aren't fully counted. And it's written by Bowen Zhao. I'm suspicious because he's Chinese. Sounds Chinese. I don't know. But this is a very, like, uh, pro... Is the city Beijing... Uh, like newspaper, like very kind of anti-communist paper. They have like a whole whole thing that's in their first promotional magazine, shitting all over communism and uh, the the party system in China. So, yeah, let's begin. Infectious disease specialists and health experts say that while the number of cases of the new coronavirus will likely continue to grow in the United States, the current case fatality rate appears to be an overestimation. Cases of the virus have jumped over the past few days, now with more than a 1,000 confirmed across the United States, according to data compiled by the Center for Systems Science and Engineering, CSSE, at John Hopkins University. As of this writing, there have been at least 32 coronavirus-linked deaths. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said on March 3rd that the global case fatality rate is about 3.4 percent but a handful of public health experts told the epoch times that the case fatality rate in the u.s is lower than the two or three percent currently estimated <coughs> the case fatality rate is the proportion of persons with a particular condition who die from that condition according to the centers for disease control and prevention harry schultz vice president of infectious disease and infection prevention at Beam Telemedicine and Healthcare told the Epoch Times that the estimated fatality rate is likely an overestimate. Finally, I hear a name. So this guy, Harry Schultz, Vice President of Infectious Disease and Infection Prevention at Beam Telemedicine and Healthcare, told the Epoch Times that the estimated fatality rate is likely an overestimate. And you know, you kind of want to have an overestimate. You kind of want to, because the way that you prevent stuff from happening is you take things that are kind of, you know, extreme measures so that the thing doesn't doesn't spread but again to what extent are extreme measures necessary for instance they're shutting down all the restaurants and things which i mean this is just kind of a, an observation that's based on nothing but just my my stupid opinion but i think like most of our economy when my area is based on friggin' restaurants so if you close restaurants it's going to screw up a lot of a lot of things um yeah it disproportionately includes elderly patients with medical conditions. This is so old school. Uh huh. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Well, there's the continuation, damn it. I know it's here somewhere. Hmm. They sent me two copies of the paper so I could give it to a friend, but um, it's continued on A4. Oh, let's see. Technical difficulties here, folks. Okay, A4. Nah, -uh. okay. And not anyone who was untested and recovered fully. Schultz, an infectious disease physician, said. So that Schultz guy is an infectious disease expert. Uh, yeah. So let's, let's start. With, it disproportionately includes elderly patients with medical conditions and not anyone who was untested and recovered fully. So that, you know, addresses the, hey, this is likely an overestimate. At the same time, the incubation period of the coronavirus can be as long as 24 days, according to the largest study analyzing patients of the disease so far. 
This is another indication that the number of actual cases is likely higher than reported. Some patients are also testing positive for the virus while showing no symptoms at all, according to a letter published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Young people under 15 had no severe illness, whatever, whatever, whatsoever, Schultz said. It could be that they already possess antibodies that provide protection against COVID-19, or their immune systems are better able to fight off the virus. The outbreak of the virus first emerged in the central Chinese city of Wuhan in December 2019. A number of U.S. states across the country have also declared public emergencies over the virus. Okay, well, there's a lot to read and go through, um, and, I, and I will eventually do that in kind of a bullet point fashion, so you don't have to just hear me reading, but from what <coughs> is being said, it's overhyped the, the risk, and so my, my, my opinion, as I've already stated, is yeah, we should take these precautionary measures, but I think that the precaution of you know shutting down restaurants but keeping other businesses open doesn't make very much sense to me, and it's too much of a, a damage to the economy given the numbers that we're uh, we're seeing. And I understand you know the difficult situation in, in in calling these shots. I mean, what's what's the right thing to do? I really I really couldn't tell you. But uh, th this is certainly exploitable by people who want to. Um, you know, kind of expand uh, government powers. It kind of sets up, sets a precedent. Now, there's also a lighter side to, hey, maybe, you know, they have been wanting to figure out how in our, you know, large, largely populated world, we haven't seen uh, a pandemic spread globally yet, right? So maybe the authorities are like jumping on the chance to see what they can implement to you know, prevent this because we have a highly mobile population going from place to place to place. And this is a completely uh, a, a new way of, of having vectors and things for the, for the, for diseases. Um, and then the response so far, you know, has not been tested. So it's kind of like a, a question of testing the, um, I can't talk right now, <laughs> but I think you understand what I'm saying. But the interesting thing to me is, okay, if it originated in China, how did it get all over the U.S.? I understand we have a lot of students and people from China, but it came from a specific province, and I don't think like all of China is exploding with the disease. There's just certain areas. Um, I could be wrong on that, but it's just very, very strange that people in my area, in the southeast, there's four cases in my small, small town of people with coronavirus. How did that happen? That, that's my question. If it's if it just came from China, how did it like end up in all these counties in South Carolina? That doesn't make I I, I just don't I don't get it. You know, like the, who transmitted it? Especially since we we took measures, you know, fairly early compared to to when we could have, and also based on the rate of infection, it's just it doesn't make sense. Like. Huh? Want to put on a tinfoil hat? I don't know, but it's weird. I just want to throw that out there. If somebody has an explanation that's very simple, it's going to make me look stupid, go ahead and tell me. But yeah, yikes. What a, what a weird, weird time it is right now. Yeah, I would be playing Bossa Nova in the background because that's what I was listening to chill myself out because I'm like, ah done too much today and i'm probably going to die <laughs> but if i put it on youtube will probably be like hey a copyright strike you had music is so dumb i mean it's already publicly available on youtube if i'm playing it in the background that guy it's like it's kind of like a free ad for that person if they make money off of it to send over to their channel but oh well you're using it i don't know it's just and and, and it, there's just so many things weird about about youtube that annoys me yeah I really need to upload that video of me seeing those wild boar because that was just fun. Seeing wild pigs, it just reminds you that there is nature that is very, very close. And it's and it's wacky. I kind of want a pot billy pig as a pet. That'd be sweet. But, um, yeah, I have an elder brother living in the house and he feeds animals random shit that's bad for them. So I really can't. Also, I don't have the time to devote to it because I recently had a dog that I had for, year, for like a decade or, or more. And the poor fella died. He was old. He had several operations. And it's just, it's a lot of work. 
I love animals though. It's so tempting to just go out and get a puppy, you know? <laughs> Anyhow, I hope everybody's staying safe. Uh, take everything that I say with a huge grain of salt. You research as much as you can uh, uh, for yourself. And uh, by God, I just, I hope everyone, I hope everyone stops acting like an idiot so everyone has access to supplies because the the response to this in terms of our panic buying might actually cause a hell of a lot of problems. And I mean, the bottlenecks and things that the quarantining is causing might, as Ron Paul has has amused, uh, be probably deadlier and more infectious causing. It was Ron Paul or somebody on his Liberty Report thing, which you can uh, check out. Anyhow, thanks so much for listening. If you like this random babbling, uh, go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, and my main website is thefractaljournal.com where you'll find stories, ideas, and more. Take care.